Welcome to another tutorial video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to build your own motion activated LED accent lighting. So let's get started with what you're gonna need for this project. The first thing you're gonna to have to do is select some LEDs for your accent lighting. I picked up LEDs from Ikea, and you can see here that they come in a box of three strips per kit. I ended up getting two kits. On the adapter for the Ikea lights, there'll be information on what kind of voltage these lights run on. So these particular LED bars run on 24 volts. And like I said, I have two kits, so there's two wall adapters. Now I only wanna power this off of one wall adapter. And unfortunately, one wall adapter can only carry enough amperage, which is also stated on the wall adapter itself. It's rated to or limited to 0.13 amps. So that leads me to the next thing that you're gonna need which is a new wall adapter. So as I mentioned, these run off of 24 volts and I'm going to have at least 0.13 amps per three LED bars. So I'll multiply that by two, I'm gonna have almost, or just over a quarter of an amp. So my wall adapter has to be 24 volts and be able to carry a minimum of a quarter of an amp roughly. So I played it safe and I went with a 24 volt wall adapter that carries one amp. Then you're gonna need your motion sensor this one is called a PIR motion sensor. And then what I have here is something optional and this is just a PWM LED controller. I'm gonna put a list of all of these parts in the description and where I found them. I actually found all of these parts except for the LEDs themselves on eBay. So I'll put links in the description, you can check it out and you can source out these parts on your own. So I also laid out these parts in the manner by which we are going to connect all of them. So you can see here that I have the wall adapter it's going to be connected to the motion sensor, which is then going to be fed through the controller, and then the controller is going to power the lights. As I mentioned, this controller is optional, so if you don't end up getting one of these, then you can just power the lights directly from the motion sensor. Essentially, the motion sensor is just acting like a relay, which is going to allow electricity to pass to the LED lights once motion is detected. So starting with the wall adapter, I'm going to chop the end off of it. And then we're gonna strip back this wire and expose the two, two lead wires, positive and negative. So now that we have the two leads coming off of the wall adapter, one positive, one negative, these two can be fed into the screw terminals on the motion sensor. And so on the bottom, it might be a little difficult to see, but it's labeled input and output. So these two will be going into the input of both positive and negative, supplying the motion sensor with 24 volts power. Be sure that if you pick up a motion sensor that it's compatible with the voltage of your wall regulator. So if you have Ikea lights, your next step will be to cut off the length of wire that has the connection for the end of your LEDs. And if you don't have IKEA LEDs, then you're going to want to prep a length of wire that's going to run from your sensor to the LEDs themselves, since you probably won't have a special connector on the end. So what I'm also going to do here is cut off this on-off switch that came with my IKEA lights. This is going to be placed between the sensor and the wall adapter that I have. So I'm able to turn on and off this entire system with a flick of a switch and I don't have to plug and unplug the wall adapter. So now that our LED connection wires have been cut on the free ends here, I have them split again into positive and negative for each of the two connections. And I'm gonna solder the two negative connections together and the two positive connections together so that these lights will be wired in parallel. What this means is that the lights, both sets, will see 24 volts. So let's go ahead and solder these. Now at the end of these two wires soldered together, I'm going to take my LED controller, which I said was optional, and I'm of course going to solder the negative connection to the negative side and the positive connection to the positive side of the side of the controller, which is labeled LED out. Now, if you don't have this optional controller, these two ends will get inserted directly into the output 
of your motion sensor. So now with the two ends soldered together, I can cover the ends with my heat shrink tubing and of course shrink it into place, protecting these two ends from shorting together. So at this point, if you're not wearing in an on-off switch into your circuit, you can skip this step. Otherwise, we will be now connecting the wall adapter to the end of our on-off switch. With these connections now made, we're going to be using our heat shrink tubing to prevent any short circuits. So now that we have the LED connectors soldered to the LED controller and the wall adapter soldered to our switch, we can take our free ends and now screw them into the screw terminals of our PIR sensor. All right, so with all the lead wires now plugged into the sensor screw terminals, I have the wall adapter plugged into the wall and I have my on switch turned on. We're gonna test out the motion sensor. As you can see right now, it's facing down, so it doesn't detect my motion, but I have one LED bar plugged in and let's lift up the sensor and see if it does turn on. Oh, there you go. So it actually did detect my motion as I moved my hand near the front side of the sensor. And now the LED bar is turned on and it's on solid. Now with my optional LED controller, we can cycle through some of the modes and make sure those are working. So this one here is just kind of like a breathing effect on off breathing and you can change the speed of that using the controller and if you cycle into the next mode more of like a strobe or a little bit of a faster flash this is more of a solid flash and we're getting into quicker flashes and more of like a strobe pattern now and back to the solid on so now that the wiring is complete, we can place this project wherever it is we originally intended to put it. For me, I will be putting this under my floating media cabinet in my entertainment room. So every time I walk into the room, this thing will turn on and it'll give a nice cool underglow effect under my media cabinet. With the lights now installed, let's take a walk into the room and see how they work. Looks like everything is functioning correctly. So the last thing I wanna show you guys is the custom stand that I built for the motion sensor. And this is just a very simple 3D printed part that the motion sensor can slide in and out of so it can stand up vertically and detect people's motion as they walk in and out of the room. That's all for this video guys. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out some of my other tutorials and projects.